We begin this edition with hearty congratulations to Madame Doreen Hammond and a host of other journalists who were awarded last night at the 70th Ghana, that's the 70th anniversary of the GJ and the 24th Ghana Journalist Awards ceremony which took place last night, of course, including City FM and the City Breakfast Show that won the English Station of the Year and the Morning Show of the Year English category. But this is press conference. My name is Duke Mentopoku, uh, where journalists gather to dissect and analyze the major press briefings and engagements in the course of the week under review. In this edition, we begin from the Chief Tenancy and Religious Affairs Ministries Meet the Press series, which uh, happened this week, uh, where a lot of issues came up. The matter of the uh, proposed construction of a national shrine, at least a petition to government to consider that, and also the matters regarding taxing of churches. And other issues came up. We'll be looking at all of that on the program uh, in this edition. We'll also look at the calls coming this week for the cancellation or the withdrawal of the December 17th referendum. Because the MPP held a press conference on Monday uh, to reaffirm its position for a yes vote after the NDC last week uh, stated that it would be campaigning for a no vote if government would not halt uh, for broader consultations. The Asantini this week also spoke calling for broader consultations. We'll be looking at the December 17 referendum, the call for it to be withdrawn or not. And finally, well, the Auditor General, Mr. Dom Levo, this week uh, was at the Yoko. After that, he wrote a strongly worded letter to the Yoko, having found out that, according to him, they do not have the jurisdiction or even the legal mandate to um, investigate alleged procurement breaches uh, that have been leveled against him. The show is live and interactive via the WhatsApp line. 0550585832, 0550585832. You can join us via the Facebook stream. Drop your comments. We would read them also on Twitter. The hashtag is press conference. We'll take a break. When I come back, I'll introduce my guests and we'll delve into the issues. Stay with us. And you're welcome back to press conference right here on City TV. Let me introduce my guest. To my immediate left is Blessed Suga. Uh, first time on the program, uh, he works with Class FM. He's a broadcast journalist and host of uh, State of the Nation. Welcome. It's good to be on your show tonight. Yes. Next to him is also uh, another uh, first time uh, appearance, uh, making first time appearance on the show. He's Justice Adoboy. He is a, the correspondent, Ghana correspondent for the Xinhua News Agency. That's the Chinese. Uh, Newswire service. Welcome, Justice. Thank you. And to my far left, uh, he has been on the show for quite, for quite on, on a number of occasions, mm -hmm. I must say, uh, looking very resplendent in his in his uh, smock. Uh, he's private legal practitioner, uh, journalist here at CTFM CCTV, Isaac Oberforce Mentor. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Duke. So let's begin with uh, the media press series, uh, which um, happened uh, this week, uh, Wednesday thereabout, where um, the mini sector minister uh, Kofi Jamisi addressed the press. A couple of, a couple of issues came up. Uh, he was faced with a question of petitions coming up for the construction of a national shrine. It's true. Uh, since I took office, as I said, we have a, a national mosque, and now we are in the process of building a national uh, cathedral. And a few times, uh, some traditional uh, groupings have also approached me. Uh, there was a group of Wolomers who also came to approach me and actually, really, also asked for a traditional shrine. I think that uh, since our constitution allows uh, a freedom of worship, uh, we will study it very well and then we'll come out and see how possible that can also be. So we are not ruling out uh, a traditional shrine also. We are not ruling it out. So those are his words. It is not being ruled out after they received the petition. But he also had cause to speak about uh, the issue concerning the taxing of churches. People are saying it should be postponed. And I said, why postpone it? It should be withdrawn. We should forget about it. 
because the whole issue is we have a president who wants to deepen the multi-party democracy. We apologize uh, for that um, wrong answer. That's, that's concerning another issue that will be coming to. But he spoke about the possibility of the establishment of a National Charities Commission to look into the matters concerning churches and uh, how they can also contribute into the state kitty by way of taxes. But let me come into the studio and, and, and begin the discussion. Let me begin with you, uh, uh, Blazer. What are some of the things that stood out for you from this media press briefing at the, by, by the minister? Well, uh, that was on Wednesday. Yes. Um, we had the opportunity, I was, I was part of that press conference on Wednesday, uh, where the Chief Tenancy Minister, uh, the Honorable Kofi Jamashi, um, took his turn to address um, the press here in Ghana. Now, um, of course, if you look at the new patriotic party regime and what they've done um, this time around, you have for the very first time the introduction of a religious affairs ministry. Yes. Um, so in other words, you're having for the very first time um, Kofi Jamishi being the first uh, of its kind when we talk about a religious minister here in Ghana. Which we chief to see in traditional affairs. Exactly. Uh, so that widens his scope. That, that brings on board a lot of issues for him to deal with. This time around, it's not just dealing with uh, issues of chieftaincy, which, which is uh, quite, quite a, a big case here in Ghana because um, as of now, we have well over 300 uh, disputes when it comes to chieftaincy here mm -hmm. in Ghana. And so these are all issues that he's been dealing with. As at the time he took office, um, he had uh, almost 320 cases. He's been able to clear 140 um, in, in a space of three years. But as we speak now, the cases have gone up, have shot up to 300 cases. So it tells you that wow. the more he's got the more he a lot to do, a lot to do just as being a uh, chief tenancy minister. But now he has an added responsibility of doing issues of religion, uh, which means that he needs to deal with a number of issues. So I'm, uh, I was actually glad uh, that when he took his turn to address us, he talked about the fact that government was in the process of bringing on board um, a national policy on religion, okay. which means that uh, this is an area, if you if you, you give you, <laughs> well, you've been in the country for some time now, mm -hmm. so you know very well that matters of religion have been left to just the stakeholders. Government uh, for quite some time now has been very much silent on issues of religion. And so the fact that government wants to introduce uh, a national policy on re religion that will guide the conduct of pastors, that will guide the conduct of all, uh, all, the, all the churchgoers or mm -hmm. Christians, as, as we say it, um, then, of course, the government is making some progress. I would just hope that this um, uh, piece of documents, which we understand will be before cabinet very soon, uh, will be passed. And when it is passed, then, uh, of course, we'll be looking forward to the implementation of it. Beyond that, then we have the issues of uh, whether or not churches should be taxed. And uh, that's where he made it very clear that um, there was no indication on the part of government to tax churches and that what they intend to do is to uh, set up a, a charity commission that will monitor the activities of these churches. Uh, in, in my view, I feel that over the years, churches have not uh, necessarily been exempt when it comes to matters of uh, tax. Last right? it is now, we don't, they don't have... We don't. They're, they're not totally exempt. The point is, uh, if you are a church, you are an organization, and so when you employ people, uh, you're going to be dealing with, with the legal ramifications of it, pay, so yeah. you'd have to pay tax. If the church that does business, that's what I know now, that, of course, your VAT is there and other uh, tax indications will, will, will definitely uh, fall into place. But what many Ghanaians want to see uh, is, mm -hmm. uh, is some sort of a direct imposition of a levy mm -hmm. on the operations of, of churches. churches. I feel that that's not going to be healthy mm -hmm. for us uh, now um, because the church mm -hmm. in Ghana uh, arguably has done so much mm -hmm. that uh, we, we cannot move into the sphere of taxing them. If we move into that arena, we're going to be discouraging churches from going into bigger and bigger economic ventures. Well, the ones who are, who are encouraging the state to look at I know the, I know even the Orthodox churches that have, and I know where you are coming from in terms of what they have done with schools, hospitals, and all sorts of amenities that mm. they've put across. Mm. These are the so in quote one man churches who are selling all sorts of things to people and well, and, I, I and, disagree. And all of that. That, that is, well, that but is I disagree that, most that of the time when that issue rise, comes up. That's what is giving rise to this sentiment 
that churches, one of these churches should be Well, I, I, I totally disagree when people describe some churches as a one-man church because even uh, some of the biggest um, churches unorthodox by, churches by, that by, we know were started John, by, John by, and by, by yeah. individuals. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, in one way or the other, uh, at some point, a church would have to be a one-man affair until, of course, they get to expand and then they get to do uh, a lot more of activities that will then attract you to um, like them. And so I don't think that's an area we need to, to, to be much more fixated on. Yes, the idea of having a charity commission to monitor the affairs of, of these institutions would help. Uh, in that case, we would not also let the, the churches relax and then um, sui ganens or perhaps do things that, that okay. would not be right. All right. Um, now on the issue of uh, national the national shrine. National shrine. We have a minute on that. Sorry. Uh, yes, very quickly. If you look at the demographics of Ghana, very clearly you see that about 70% uh, of our population, you have Christians there, and then um, uh, somewhat around 20, uh, you have our Muslim uh, fellows and those who practice the traditional uh, religion. And so it will not be out of place if government intends to um, bring about some national co co uh, coherence um, when, when they consider a national monument for those who practice traditional religion. But what these religions have to be wary of is that if you look at the national cathedral that's being put up now, it's not being sponsored entirely by the government of yes. Ghana. So they should be prepared uh, to also Contribute. dip their hands in the pocket and All try right. to bring out okay, something come that, to that, justice. Will, that will be may, have, that may have observed what, what happened there. What will be the, your, the highlights, the major talking points for you from that sector? Okay, so um, thank you very much, Duke. Let me start from where um, he left off. Um, talking about the National Shrine mm -hmm. for the traditional religious practitioners. Now, let me say that there is that erroneous um, impression. Even the minister uh, mentioned it that we have a national um, mosque. Mm -hmm. Now, I know for a fact that that mosque wasn't sponsored or fun financed by the, by the government of That's Ghana. It was actually the government of Turkey which donated that to the Muslim community in Ghana. So, But, and, I, but is that to say that there was no level of I mean, there was nothing in terms of facilitation from no. the state. Is that the point? Okay. The People state, talk about even the land. The, the state may have, mm -hmm. peri uh, maybe perhaps, used its embassy mm -hmm. in Turkey mm -hmm. to maybe hold discussions. Yes. But this mosque mm -hmm. was entirely financed by the Muslim or the Islamic world okay. for the Muslim community mm -hmm. in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Now, so it is not um, perhaps something you can do an equalization on, okay. maybe because the Muslims have their national mosque, um, Christians should also have their um, national cathedral. Mm -hmm. Now, this whole issue about the state meddling in religion, you know, is something that is not healthy mm. for religions themselves. Okay. Because once you begin to see, we are not in a theocratic state. Okay. We are in a um, secular state. Mm -hmm. And the constitution allows everybody to believe in whatever or even disbelieve in whatever things he, he chooses to believe or disbelieve, you know, so that the state only needs to create um, that environment right. where everybody is free to practice whatever he wants to practice once your practices do not offend the law. For instance, if it is a religion that perhaps the fellow takes the uh, takes a woman to the beach to go and bath. That is obscene. You understand that? <laughs> or when a religi religious practitioner says, my gods need um, human blood, you understand that? Yeah. So that is denying somebody of the, his right to life. Mm -hmm. So but these are the environments that the state needs to create mm -hmm. for every religion to thrive. But the state does not need to participate directly in religion because... So you, so you are against every form Speaking of, I mean, from a Christian point of view and speaking a bit from hindsight with church history, mm -hmm. you realize that any time the state participated in religion, it leads that religion into a state where, um, you know, it begins to deviate mm -hmm. from the path that it has, you know, taken for itself, that is spelled out in its religious books. And so you begin to see divisions and most of the times states also use their cronies in these religions, you know, to actually coerce practitioners of these religions. So you begin to see uh, an unhealthy 
existence, you know, an unhealthy relationship between religion and state. So in most cases, Christians um, frown upon where the state and their religion begin to cohabit. It's an unhealthy practice for them. We are not saying that um, Christianity should not, you know, support governance. Christianity supports governance. Um, they call them to come and preach, uh, to come and pray and at national, national events and so on and so forth. And like he said, Christian religion has paid its dues mm -hmm. in Ghana. Most of the schools you have, most of the strong schools you have in Ghana start, were started by Christian missionaries. The Basel mission, the Catholic mission, the, you know. And so you cannot actually say that Christianity has not been supportive of the state. Now, what do we have today? What you call um, um, one-man churches? Now, let me just give one example. Reverend Mesa started as a one-man church. Mm -hmm. Today, he's built a university, yeah. one of the strong private universities in Ghana. And can you imagine the number of people that he's, number of, you know, skills mm -hmm. that he is churning out yearly mm -hmm. to support nation building? You know, so religion has been supportive of state. Now, does the state have to build a cathedral for yeah. religion? No, the state does yeah, not have to. School. Because it will bring the state... So we are for the a point where it separation is of the church meddling, yeah, from the meddling state. in affairs of religion, no. which is not acceptable to Christianity. And I don't think, like this guy said, this guy who used to be the PRO for um, AMA, he's no a more. tradition, no more, yeah, no more, no more blafo. He said, you cannot build a shrine, you know, a homogeneous shrine, because for they, all all because they, 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 are, they are not different, religion. different practices right. in traditional okay. religion. So for me, that comes out from the horse's own mouth. They said they cannot coexist under one umbrella. So you cannot build a shrine for them. For them. So right. I begin to see, ask how, who advises the state in some of these ventures? All right. I, I begin to okay. ask questions. Let, so. let me come to you, um, okay. Wil Wilberforce. We are in a secular state. Mm. And once, at least, we've seen that there has been some money advanced to the um, Christian folk to, for, to, to facilitate. I mean, right today, we are even finding out that some 9.2 million Ghana cities has to be spent to relocate the passport office mm. for the building of the National Cathedral. That's, that just emerged as part of the budget debate on, on, on Friday. Mm. Uh, people, some, are, some are saying that the chief tenancy, the religious affairs ministry has nothing to do. So it just doubles itself in, in such controversial matters. Last year was flying of, uh, of Christians to um, Jerusalem for mm -hmm. on a pilgrimage. This year is a petition to construct a national tri shrine, which we heard the mm -hmm. minister say that they are considering it. I, I, I think the, minister, the, the minister's statement uh, was in response. I don't think the ministry is seriously considering it. No, we are not ruling it out. That's what yeah. he said. I'll be as brief as possible to make uh, time for you know, the other, the other discussions. discussions because mm -hmm. issues of referendum, for instance, I feel will take quite a bit of time yeah. and also dominate those issues. But... Uh, I, I, I don't think he's seriously considering this. I think it was just based on the moment. You've been asked a question. Then he says stuff like the, the, a few members of the Wulome have asked him. But the, a leading member of the Wulome himself, Numo Blafo III, has told you that, look, this is the first time he's even hearing of this. So I don't know who may have said this to the minister with the greatest respect. And also issues of the Charity Commission. I think it's going to be a bit difficult because the Charity Commission will be filled with members who have their own religious background. Some mm -hmm. may be coming from the conventional churches or orthodox churches. Some may be coming from the charismatic church. So it will be difficult to decide how things or how the churches should be managed amongst others. So I think I agree with him when he says issues of state and religion should be there should Absolutely. be a, a, a clear dichotomy between the two. However, we will not also move away from the fact that states and religion, they meet at some point, um, even the first few years of our constitution, in the name of the almighty God. Mm -hmm. So as to even Ghana being a secular state per se is still debatable, mm -hmm. you know. So that's another issue. But I'll, I'll rest on this matter to make, uh, you right. know, discussion time okay. for this. So uh, let the discussions uh, continue in your homes, in uh, your living rooms <laughs> as, as you watch this program. We'll take a break here. When we come back, we'll delve into the other issues. This is press conference. Don't change the channel.
And you're welcome back. This is Press Conference right here on CCTV. I still have in studio uh, Blessed Justice and Isaac. Uh, gone by, we're discussing matters arising from the Chief Tenancy and Religious Affairs Ministry's press briefing, which took place uh, this week under review. Now that we're moving to the December 7th um, referendum, the referendum which is asking the question whether we should have the election or district level elections on partisan basis. So far, the NDC has come out to say that that referendum should be postponed for further consultations. If that is not done, then they are all for a no vote. The MPP held a press conference this week and a review uh, to state their position or reaffirm their position that has been stated clearly on this matter. John Boydou is General Secretary of the Governing Party. Such a naked show of dishonesty, deceit, indecision, lack of candor and integrity from the biggest opposition party in the country project a perception that the NDC will sacrifice the national interest at the altar of rather where chief politic political points are to be scored. There is a strong school of thoughts, ladies and gentlemen, that the only thing that can explain the NDC unexpected U-turn is that they are fully aware of the difficult task of getting the amendment through without a consensus. They are aware that it will be difficult for us to get the amendment through without a consensus. They knew well, or they knew very well, but pretended they were in favor until this last minute when huge state resources have been committed into such an important exercise. By urging their supporters to vote no, the NDC by this frivolous game hopes to register a curious propaganda victory as we enter, enter election 2020. Let this message be clear and let it go out to every household, ladies and gentlemen, that as far as the new patriotic party is concerned, a yes vote is not about the new patriotic party and certainly not about the NDC. It is about what is good for Ghana, what is good for governance in our country, particularly where it matters most. So that was John Buedu. Another stalwart of the MPP has been making an argument. This time I'm not so close to what John Buedu is saying. He is rather saying, of course, with the benefit of running a referendum himself as Minister for Reg Regional Reorganization and Development. Um, that's Dan Butri, MP for Okre. He's calling for a total withdrawal of the referendum. He says the money could even be used for construction of roads. People are saying it should be postponed. And I'm saying, why postpone it? It should be withdrawn. We should forget about it. Because the whole issue is we have a president who wants to deepen the multi party democracy at the um, decentralized, uh, what do you call it, level, at the disassembly level. And it's happening in other countries. So there are the ridiculous arguments of dividing the country further. It's, it's, I don't want to use that word, but it's so ridiculous. It doesn't make sense that multi-party democracy is a divisive thing. Then why we are practicing it? We fought so much to make sure that there's multi-party democracy. We are multi-party democracy. We are deepening the process by sending it to the um, decent level. And you are saying that that will divide because there is division at the top. And people put up such, such baseless statements and they gain currency. And I'm amazed. So that's Dambuchi. Um, he says it should be cancelled, withdrawn, not postponed. All right, let me come to the student. I'm beginning with you, Justice. I, I have read comments, I mean, attributed to you, you're advocating for a no vote. Yes, you're advocating for a no vote. But now the, the calls are arising for this whole issue to be postponed. Let's deal with the amendment in Parliament so that we can save some, the, the state some resources. Isn't that a sensible position to, 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 to pose it? Okay. Thank you very much, Duke. Um, let me start from here. You see, Dambucho's position that he has taken, where he said that the money could be used even to build roads, mm. is very hypocritical to me. Mm. Because where I'm coming from, a road network was suspended. Construction mm. of a road network was suspended. And there was just a little money, about 30 million Ghana cities needed to pay the contractor. But Dambucho, Honorable Dambucho led 
the referendum on the creation of new regions, mm. that cost the country about 900 million Ghana cities mm. last year. Mm. And so now this referendum is not being run alone. It is being run alongside the district Two assembly alliance. elections. Yeah. So you would realize that expenditure being made on this might not be as high as, or even might not be um, 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 exclusive, mm -hmm. you know. So it's that position he has taken to me is mm. hypocritical. Mm -hmm. Now, secondly, when you look at the position of government, I will remind you of a day in parliament. I believe it was the day um, the finance minister came to present the midterm budget review yes. this year. Yes, yes, yes. You know this issue came up in parliament. It was, that was the, that's the day the debate took place. The Good. debate on amending the constitution what for did the, the of What did the minority leader warn the majority about? Mm. He warned them not to actually band these two issues together. Mm. The issue about electing mm -hmm. this the MMDC. MMDCEs was different, totally different from electing district assembly and the unit committee members. And he told them that Look, for the district assemblies, it needed a referendum. Mm -hmm. But the issue about electing MMDC did not need a referendum. That's part of and they, NDC had been consistent, mm -hmm. not today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From the time of the enaction of the law mm -hmm. to protect the district assembly system, mm -hmm. they have been consistent up to today. Look, in the era of President mm -hmm. Kufuor, this, this same matter, this debate came up. Mm -hmm. And you will listen, and one person I am waiting to hear on this matter is the man who brought this whole thing, you know, whose brainchild it is, mm -hmm. Jerry Rollins. Mm -hmm. I've been waiting to hear him because one of the arguments they made from the beginning was that partisan politics mm -hmm. does not necessarily create a unified playing field, mm -hmm. you know, but they will not like that kind of, you know, divisions and dichotomies to descend to the grassroots where you have people, parties imposing, mm. you know, candidates that might not be the choices of the people on them. Mm. And then also, look at how decisions are made here in parliament. There is a, a whip that whips party members in line. Rasmus Barak. Okay? <laughs> so that <laughs> issues are taken not on their merit, but on the basis of what the party wants to be done. Yeah. So this is the kind of issue that they do not want to see at the district level. Yeah, it's happening anyway. You know, if you want a clue, just look at the the, I, the I, colors of the posters. Good, 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 good. That the is colors of the smart. posters. When of you the see them, of, you know. Yes, it. you know that this is an NDC candidate, yeah. assemblyman yeah. candidate. Or it's this true an, because on the colors of the posters. There is nobody so in um, Ghana. Very few people in Ghana can say that they don't owe. Yeah, they are apolitical. Mm. And so, yes, you realize that this fellow is using those colors mm -hmm. to attract majority of his party members. To vote for him, mm -hmm. but you realize that people actually build consensus. I remember in 1988 when they voted for this thing, mm -hmm. Jerry Rowling said that they wanted people to go and stand on their own merit. Mm -hmm. There should be people of integrity that the district, the local level, the people trust. Mm -hmm. However, when you look at our MPs, let me just use one example. Mm -hmm. NDC is facing a difficult problem in Asawasi today mm -hmm. because the party, quote and unquote, imposed the candidate that the people don't want on them. That, 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 that's that's why I said quote and unquote. That's, that's why I said quote and unquote because yes, this is the mm -hmm. issue from the Asawasi people, people yeah. that they do not want the current majority chief whip anymore. But the party somehow managed to get him to become their candidate. But if you look at it, if people were going to be elected on their own merit, the people of Asawasi would have gone out mm. to elect the one they want. But once the NDC has brought this fellow, all NDC people are going to vote for him. Mm. Now, this is with no prejudice to Honorable um, uh, Muntaka, Muntaka at all. It is with no prejudice to him. Okay. But I'm using it as an example. And it happens all over the place that parties impose candidates on people and on constituencies that the people might not necessarily want. But at this level... At this level, the grassroots level, people think that if I live in your town, mm -hmm. if I'm a person of integrity, if I'm a hardworking man, if I have the area or the um, um, electoral area at heart,
people will know it by my deeds. Mm. And so they will vote for me on the basis of that. Okay. This has been the argument from day one. Mm. And so I have not heard NDC ever said that they were for, you know, electing um, assembly members on partisan well, basis. That, 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 okay. That, 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 Records to that effect. Okay, and I, said, what the, I said I have been yes, headed. At, at the IDEC forum and the rest, even in okay, parliament. So. I have not watched the IDEC forum, yes. but in parliament, mm. what the majority leader, minority leader, mm. want the majority about? What's about confusing the issues? Okay, yeah, that's, that's now that's, that's, and that's so, what's in that. But do you support this? This should we go ahead with it? Should be should it be withdrawn or it should it not should be go withdrawn? ahead and then let people decide, let Ghanaians decide what they want. But when you know. I, I, I wonder why the government wants to withdraw it now. Because they are beginning to... When it, we, we don't have an official position from government saying they want to withdraw. Okay. We've heard suggestions. I don't, I don't want to... We were told yesterday okay. by the Deputy Minister of Information that the President, on his return, it, before he left, he commissioned another round of survey. Okay. As to the sentiments on the ground okay. and then consultations. And that a firm decision will be made Man. when he comes back this week. All right. So, so, let, me say, so let me say that you, you proposed a referendum. Mm -hmm. Electoral Commission has gone ahead to make preparations for it. Money has been spent. Why do we withdraw it now? Let's go ahead and... Because when you propose a referendum, it can be yes or no. Mm. It can be yes or no. And when the Guardian go and say no, so be it. If they say yes, Don't forget so this referendum it. has some requirements. 40% turnout, 70%. And 75%, percent. Yeah, yeah. yes. And you see, one of the issues that actually So you need a lot of mobilization. Me. If you get signals that you won't get that, why waste fed up? Because no, if, let's because go no matter ahead. what happens, whether we... Put in money. Whether we, 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 if we decide to go ahead with it, the money we are going to spend will be more than what you've already put into. No, it. let me ask That's that. Okay, that. let me ask: Is the government not trying to ask the people to make a decision? Okay. That's what the government seems to be saying. All right. We want the people to decide on this. Yes. So when, the government should not be held bent on having a yes, yes. vote. Okay. Allow the people to decide. And one of the institutions that has surprised me mm. is actually the local government institute. Mm -hmm. Because this is an institution that was created to support the decentralization policy yes. with, you know, research, process, and research and thought process. But then somebody from there begins to go around, talk about... Vote. What is the yeah. position they have? No, a research an institution position they have like that, based should, on research, an institution like that should be very should be, careful be okay. and take the people along. All right, let that me is come what to I believe. Bless it. Well, to uh, withdraw or not to withdraw? Well, I think that at, at this point, um, what the government of Ghana needs to do is to proceed with the uh, referendum. Mm -hmm. that, that's my position mm -hmm. on this, uh, because you have the National House of Chiefs coming out to say, vote no. The NDC says no, no. That that is that is an arguable position, mm. because after you know, there's 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 a division in the National House of Chiefs. That's his stance now. So the president, the president who, says who, who, who the president, directs and controls the affairs of the National House oh, of Chiefs says that we have signed a press, press release. We are asking the people of Ghana, but the, but the to one, vote no. The committee that he alluded to, mm. as having given them the basis to say no comes out and says, our ah, paper did not well, propose a no. That is uh, Nana SKB Asantis. That's the governance but, but as it stands mm -hmm. now, the, the, there is an official statement out there. Signed, signed by, by the, the president. president. So if you and go the by the position of the president. Not the position, <laughs> but, but the position of the National House of Chiefs. They claim that we must vote. But that's, that's not a unified position. And, and then um, you, you look at, for instance, mm -hmm. the National Democratic Congress. Yes. They have told us as well to vote no. The drivers here in Ghana, mm -hmm. the commercial drivers are asking us to, to vote no mm -hmm. um, when, when, we, when we go to the polls. So we cannot allow these three sects of, mm -hmm. of, 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 of people in Ghana mm -hmm. to hold us to ransom and to push the government into believing that when you go ahead with the referendum, um, it's not going to be successful. But, but until about just a month ago, After all, 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 it looks like there was a, a unified voice. Well, that everybody well that's your perspective. In, the in, new voices in, started coming up in, about in, three in, weeks in, ago. In, 2000, in 2016, mm -hmm. President John Mahama says, I want to be president. Mm -hmm. Nanado says, I want to be president. We had to go to the people of Ghana, to which vote. the preamble of the Constitution says, mm -hmm. has, uh, they have the power to decide whatever it is that, that, that pertains to the future of this country. Okay. And so I believe that at this point, the government would not lose anything if we proceed with what is deemed as democratic. Mm. After all, we are just taking the views of people mm -hmm. to find out if indeed 
the DCs should be elected on partisan basis. But I'll, I'll tell you what, this is the biggest problem of the local um, uh, government structure. Mm -hmm. The problem now is about how Ghanaians do not want to care at all, mm. uh, for, for whatever reason it, it, it is, uh, do not want to care about who gets to represent them at this local level. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, Duke, I presume that you're not very much interested waking up to see what your assembly member does. I voted only once. Well, in so, so that, that's the... That, that's, oh, that, in 2010. That, that's where, <laughs> that, so that's where the problem, problem begins. Once. And then, number two, you have the DC, the chief executive of each and every MMDA here in Ghana, being an Article 71 office holder. These are the two key problems mm -hmm. of the local governance structure. First of all, let us go back and open the floodgates for those who, who, who want to be assembly members to be, in my view, mm -hmm. elected on partisan basis. Mm -hmm. Then we'll then whip up the interest mm -hmm. because turn up uh, at, at these local level 17%. elections have been, uh, hovering around 17%. 17 so if you open the floodgates for these assembly members to campaign and actively go out on, uh, on party tickets, then we are likely to see um, a, a, a larger interest mm -hmm. going into matters of the local level election. So we are then going to be particular about who represents you mm -hmm. at the assembly. And then we next take off the DCs, the, the chief executives of these MMDAs, from Article 71. Okay. Give them that responsibility to generate their own funds and then run the local no. government structure. When that begins to happen, you see that a case where a chief executive doesn't come to office and says, well, I don't care what happens. Um, after all, I'm getting my pay mm -hmm. at the end of the month. That chief executive will begin to think twice because you look at the kitty of, of your local assembly and then you, be, you begin to devise means and ways by which you can raise funds and make the, and that, that the local government more effective. to go back to the effective. people again to seek, another, to seek another term based on the records that you've been able to or what you've been able to well, achieve. For, 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 this is what, what a lot of people have not paid attention to. We have always voted for uh, the chief executives of our MMDCs, except that this has been done through the assembly electoral members. college system. Yes. So what you have is a group of assembly members who we have not thought about electing in any way, because mm -hmm. these are people who just emerge, they are popular, and then we give them the opportunity to represent us. We don't really care what they do. So when they go there and the presidential nominee comes, and this is what happens, that most, in most of the cases they give handouts for you to endorse. I think you're speculating at this point. Well, that's a fact anyway. That it's, be, it's become it's become it's something which is which is which is uh, well known which is, which is well known within and the local based government based structure. On, based, based on that, uh, on that, partisan politics. That some, some are rejected three times. True. Largely, <laughs> largely because you don't have the handouts yes. coming in, and so you you get to enhance that's, that's, it that's almost that's all of the time. No. All right, no. uh, and then and then okay. we get to so, appoint so, people so, who, uh, excuse my so, language, are not supposed to be there. All right. So let me make a sense of what you're saying. Two issues can be resolved by going ahead with the referendum and voting yes. That's what you're saying. Well, well the, the people of Ghana would have to decide whether or not right. you vote. Okay, yes let me come no. to you. We need to yeah. leave come that to, to them. Uh, over first. What's okay. your diagnosis the, of the, the situation? The issue about um, these assembly nominees, already your candidates for district, for assembly elections, already using party colors. Mm -hmm. So let's go. They are using party colors, and so what? There's no law that says do not use party colors. What the law says is that do not use party symbols. That's what's contained in Article 248 of the Constitution. That's just to point out the hypocrisy mm. in the whole system. So, so <laughs> let, let, let's, let's not say colors and symbols are the same. If okay. they choose to use party colors, allow them to use party colors. So that's just to start. They're not mm -hmm. breaking any laws. In any case, if we are going to amend or seek to amend Article 55, and we are seeking to amend Article 243, mm. 55 relating to the district assemblies and 243 relating to the MMDCs, then we are not looking at Article 248. Mm. Then I, 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 think, I think government, if there's the proposal of government, indeed, government is being a bit too hasty in this regard. Okay. Because to amend these two and not to amend 248, for, for, that, for, the, for lack of, or for clarity's sake, let me with your permission, of course, Mr. Host, read to our viewers what 248 is saying. And 248 has not been tabled for amendment. So 248... I think it's part of the consequential amendment. 
it's part of the consequential amendment, but it's, it's an integral part that should have been brought to the people Before. as well. Okay. You understand? So if you are seeking to, and this is being brought to the Ghanaian people as a wholesale uh, mm. referendum, mm. just like the constitution was given to us, you may not agree with some parts or some portions of the constitution, but it brought wholesale, is either yes or no. Mm. Now, if you are taking 55 and mm. 243, I can say that, at least from the people I've spoken to and dealt with, every, every, everybody is in agreement with 243 mm -hmm. being amended. Let us vote instead of the president appointing. appointing. So why don't we separate 243 and 55? Maybe 55, they want to couple it with 243 because an aspect of it is saying that, let me read this for mm -hmm. clarity. Of course, 553 is saying that subject to the provisions of this article, a political party is free to participate in shaping the political will of the people, to disseminate information on political ideas, social, economic programs, or national character, and sponsor candidates for election to any public except. office except uh, to district assemblies or, lo or lower local government units. So maybe the interpreta interpretation they are given to the lower local government units may include the MMDC, but you that, committee. that may not exactly. That because the, the, the meaning of the lower local government unit should mm. be circumscribed around the district assemblies and not the who becomes MC or DC. Okay. So we should separate the two and maybe test the people of Ghana with 243. As to let's, let, let it just go ahead. Arguments to me for let it just go ahead is that you know what? Let the people of Ghana decide. Mm whether or not they want this to be done. Okay. But then the people of Ghana, of course, wanting 243 to, you know, come into effect, mm. might then decide to allow 55. So th there should be more education into, it, into this NC, NC uh, National Commission, Commission for Civic Education. They should be very much involved, as they already are, in, in spite of their constraints. Okay. Let the people understand what it is that they are going to vote for. And let's just go ahead right, so and should not go ahead. vote, well, maybe. I have a, well, my panelists... All think that um, we should go ahead with it. It should not be withdrawn. Let the Ghanaian people No, decide. I'm saying it should be withdrawn. You're not saying it should be withdrawn. It should be withdrawn. I think, personally, I think it should be withdrawn. Okay, so it's 2 Because one. I think it's a waste of money. Oh, money. 2 one. Waste of money. Okay. And I think Just it should briefly. go ahead. But there was something that um, he said, yeah, Blessing yeah, said, it. that because people are already, you know, people do not actually go out to vote. Mm -hmm. We need to carry out a study to know why people... People are just not interested. Whether there is a part, why there is People apathy. are just not interested. People don't care what they are saying. People are not except interested. In the, except in the rural areas. Of course, as for that, whatever happens, the assembly, even if someone's wife is going mm. to give birth, there's no ambulance. And that is where assembly the, that is the so, battleground of the yes, country development. But in the urban areas, oh, forget nobody that cares about That is the battleground for the country the development. Members. Where do we have people mm. drinking dirty water? Where do we have people needed? There was this right. child who died last week because of snake bite and he could not get medication. Okay. When did this happen? In so, the rural So we area, should look into why the why level of participation there is, is low. The apathy. We should look into that rather than doing this sort of, you know, simplistic way of curing this that might create future problems for us. All right. Okay. We'll take a break here. When, when I come back, I would read your messages. We have quite a lot. Uh, we have lots of them here. And then we'll move into a final issue for discussion. This is press conference. Uh, stay with us. Welcome back. Let's do some of your messages. And now, uh, let me start from the Eastern region, Kwon uh, Kwetia to be precise. And Thomas sending us this message says, electing MMDCs on partisan basis would only end up allowing political party delegates to usurp the power of the people given the over, given the overpolarization of the country along political lines. Moreover, as it happens with the MPs, the elected officers will be accountable to their parties and not the electorate. Um, Asari from Mahafu Kenya, she says, I don't understand why some people don't see politics at the national level where more resources are distributed as destructive, but see assembly elections on party lines as destructive. If we should vote no, the election of MMDs should remain, then the election of MMDCs should remain as it is. <laughs> um, Al Hassan Warizei from Tamale says, We shouldn't waste time. The president should just cancel it. Musa from Golu 
in the upper west region says concerning the MMDC elections, I think the party in power should rather present candidates for the electorates to vote for them. So that's the um, suggestion that came from the Constitutional Review Commission, the white paper. Uh, Patrick Akoto from Accra, uh, Accra says, can your panelists withdraw the statement of Mutaka with regards to the NDC? I think I challenged that claim. Then he said those were, that was based on his own personal view. So I think that issue was clear. The Mutaka being imposed on the uh, party. Uh, this one from Divine and um, Dansuman says, my brother, let us not run away from the reality. The driving force behind the call for no vote on the December 17th is the Ayawasu West Wogon by election tragedy and the manner the government mistreated the email short commission report. I don't know the link. A yes mm -hmm. vote in, will introduce more violence in our communities, mm -hmm. undermine our family ties mm -hmm. and solidarity, and subsequently subverts the authority and reverence accorded to the chief tenancy institutions. Ghanaian must vote That's a big no on December 17. That is what you think, Divine, from um, Dan Suman. Last one uh, from um, Nanaya, Nanayao Haguna Safo. says, I think there's nothing wrong with building a national shrine. This was promulgated by Nkuma when he first poured libation at the memorial service of Dr. Kweji Agri in North Carolina. Nkuma had, as had then, completed the seminary at the Lincoln University. So I'm giving us some history. And for a national shrine, national cathedral, and if possible, a national mosque, we've come of age. That's from Aguna Safo. Last one, Alas and Tamale. I think, in my opinion, MMDC should be voted for, but assembly members should remain as it is. So you are looking for stratification. Vote for MMDCs, mm, partisan yeah, yeah, yeah. basis, non-partisan mm. assembly members. Mm. I'm confusing that. All right. So final issue. Ioko and the Auditor General, he was invited. He had to answer some questions. And then later after that, he indicated that he actually had found out from his lawyers. And uh, if my producers will put up the letter on the screen. Yes. So that's from the Auditor General. Uh, to the acting executive director of the uh, IOKO, he says, you will recall that for close to four weeks now, your office has been inviting officers from the Ghana Audit Service, including myself, on the premise of investigating alleged procurement breaches in respect of some vehicles procured by the Ghana Audit Service in 2018. Uh, for, so, so, he says, a careful reading of your enabling law, the IOKO Act, and from discussions with my lawyers, I'm of the firm belief that your office does not have the mandate to investigate any breaches under the Procurement Act. In fact, I'm advised that the relevant provision in Act 959, which amended Act 804, is Section 80, and there in your office's mandate to, to include procurement breaches has been taken away. Thus, your power, office purpose exercise now has been effectively taken away, an amendment contained in Section 79 of Act 959. This clearly means that your office does not have any jurisdiction to investigate corruption-related offences uh, to include breaches of the procurement, public procurement, it's quite bizarre and unfathomable why your office would purport to be investigating uh, procurement breaches when, in fact, it does not have any legal authority. Let me begin mm. with the lawyer. Yeah. Yes. This matter is in court. Mm. It's in court. It should be in court. Yes. And, and be beyond that, I think it's in court. Maybe they're seeking clarity on the, the powers of Yoko yes. or, or otherwise. But I would say that... I've, I've seen the, the release from the civil societies saying yes. or purporting to support of the Malibu. No, 19 of them actually. 19 of them purporting to support the Malibu. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is that, what, what, what are you supporting him for? You see, some allegations have been made against him. Why don't we look into whether or not the allegations are true? Mm -hmm. The January 3 letter signed of, of the PPA, signed by Mrs. Siladodo, is saying that, you know what, certain things... Yes, Mrs. Leslie Dodu, sorry. Mm -hmm. Certain things you have done or that the GA, the Ghana Audit Service have, uh, has done is in breach of the Procurement Act. Now, you are talking about issues of corruption and, uh, and, uh, and the Yoko does not have the powers to investigate corruption and then it has been given to the Office of the Special Prosecutor amongst others. And who has said you are corrupt? Mm -hmm. Who has, who, who, who has made any such says you don't have the power to investigate me. Jurisdiction is important. Jurisdiction the law. is important. Yes. But remember that we are talking about acts of parliament mm -hmm. here. When the, the key law mm -hmm. herein is Article 88 mm -hmm. of the Constitution, which has given the Attorney General the power to do the same. Now, you have Yoko and the Attorney General. You have Office of Special Prosecutor and the Attorney General. In fact, Section 5 of the Special Prosecutor's Act is saying that the mandate is given to the Special Prosecutor by the Attorney General. So it all leads back to the Attorney General. So even the Special Prosecutor's power is dependent on that of the Attorney General. So for you, Dom Levo has no case. 
But let us no case. Let us look at to be, to what be, to be to be resisting what the what the Yoko is doing. Is, what are you afraid of, Mr. Domelovo? He has not said what he has a problem with the investigation. No, so he says the investigation you that you are conducting, you don't have you if, don't have the power. If, if you don't I have feel the mandate I've not to do done that. anything, whether otherwise you know that we honored their invitation in the first place. My, my, He's my, not afraid my, of the investigation. Nobody. But my point but is that it's a point of law. He must point out that you don't have the power to investigate. Why are you pointing out point? In fact, point of law. Who, who what that law means is to be de determined by the apex court of the land. And they, under under Article One and Two of the Constitution, the Supreme Court that interprets law. If okay. not Domelovo, is neither is it Afag or anybody Yoko. None of you are, have the power to interpret. So the should law. let the court issue play out. Because we are talking about serious breaches of the Procurement Act here. We are talking about breaches that may have led, or that indeed similar things led to the removal of oh, Madame so Charlotte the or the electoral court. So right. you see, really briefly. My issue with Domelovo, which I have taken to the Supreme Court, and not only him that mm. I've taken to the Supreme Court, I've dragged also the, the, whole, the whole board of mm. the audit service to the Supreme Court for them to interpret Article 187 of the Constitution. That which, 187 to is saying that in the exercise of your functions, of its functions, the Auditor General is not subject to the control or direction of anyone. And it is this provision that Domelovo has used to empower himself, whatever that he, he is asked to do, more or less. He says that I'm not, I'm not subject to the control or direction of anyone based on Article 187. So the Supreme Court should interpret for me and for the rest of Ghanaians what that provision means. Does that mean okay. absolutely anything right. you do okay. or only okay. your We functions? have one minute. I don't know who's, who's going to take it, who's going to. Just okay, let me just point out that on the Domelevo issue, the brief that I have read, mm -hmm. um, I read some things that were published by the Daily Graphic, mm -hmm. which, of course, is a very credible newspaper, yes. that the board of the PPA said when these issues were raised, mm -hmm. no money had been paid to Toyota Ghana. Mm -hmm. And so it was actually the board of PPA that ordered the audit service to pay the money to mm -hmm. order Toyota Ghana so that we don't incur judgment debt. Now, this is what I have read. Now, mm -hmm. but you also look at when the issue is happening. Around the same time, that the Auditor General was pursuing some infraction, alleged infraction, the by minister. the senior minister, and also commented on the money allegedly given to Ioko by GMPC. Mm. Then all of a sudden, you see all of these, you <laughs> state know, agencies. Uh -huh, state agencies pursuing I, I, I don't entire believe, I entirely believe that this, this, that was the start mm. of, of the problem. In October this year, I had a conversation with the Auditor General himself mm -hmm. on my show, yes, yes, yes. and uh, this doesn't look like someone who is interested in leaving. But let me just quickly comment on, on, on the CSOs yes, and what they've yes, written. Yes, I, I find it a bit uncomfortable mm -hmm. that persons in, in civil society mm -hmm will go into the realm of speculating that elements within the new patriotic party are intimidating the Auditor oh, General. Yeah. They should go to the extent of rather Providing encouraging evidence. another civil society organization, which mm -hmm. is uh, the Alliance for mm -hmm. Accountable mm -hmm. Governance, to petition who Daniel Domelvo claims is the right organ organization mm -hmm. to probe him. Mm -hmm. There and then we can have transparency into what is happening at the audit service. Okay. Because Wonderful. looking at the office he, he occu occupies, we cannot for any minute have someone mm -hmm. whose integrity in is, is in question. So yeah. we need to, right. we okay. need to so look thank at you, Thank you, gentlemen. Concept. Blessed yes. to God is broker journalist with uh, Class FM. Justice Adobo works for the Shinwan News Agency. And um, Isaac Uba for Mensa is private legal practitioner. And uh, he works with City FM and City TV. My name is Duke Mensa. To you out there for doing the watching. Enjoy the rest of our programming. Keep watching City TV. Till same time next week.